Understanding Contradictions 1 Corinthians 14.34 Part 1. Setting up the problem In a comment on my post Proverbs as a gendered text, Ray said, Proverbs does something that Paul reverses. In Proverbs, wisdom is a woman, whether she's supposed to be understood as a female heavenly being or as a personification, still a woman, a woman who is teaching. Now, that's really interesting. In 1 Corinthians 14.34, Paul says, Women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they should be subordinate. Yet in the Old Testament we have examples of human women teaching and instructing. Deborah the prophetess judged Israel and gave orders to Barak the general. Ruth gave Boaz some strong suggestions. Esther organizes and prompts King Ahasuerus. And in Proverbs, the non-human wisdom is a female character who acts like a street preacher, shouting her teaching in the highways and byways of the city. All of these commanding and teaching female figures seem to be approved by the biblical texts in which they appear. So is Paul contradicting the Old Testament here? Good question, Ray. It gets more complicated though if we look at Paul's own practice. For Paul commends women teachers, leaders and prophets. Surely such women, leaders, teachers and prophets, spoke in the meetings. Earlier in the same letter, in a difficult and much argued over passage, Paul said, any man who prays or prophesies with something on his head disgraces his head, but any woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled disgraces her head. It's one and the same thing as having her head shaved. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 4 to 5. Forget the business of head coverings, that's another story. But notice that Paul quite accepted that women should, as long as they acted properly, in terms of the culture of the time, and covered their heads, pray and prophesy in a public meeting. This fits with Paul's practice elsewhere. In Romans 16.1, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church at Chencherai. Deacon might be just a sort of servant, or even like those chosen in Acts, a more practical form of leadership compared with the apostles. But here something funny is going on with the translators, because often diakonos, the Greek word, is translated minister, in the sense of the modern word for a pastor. 1 Corinthians 3.5, who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed. Colossians 1.23, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Colossians 1.7, Ephrathus, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. Ephesians 3.7, of which I became a minister, and so on and so on. Just occasionally, diakonos gets rendered deacon, a modern word for some form of practical ministry. And this just happens to be one of those few places. But it sounds rather different if we use the same translation of diakonos as is used in most other places, without twisting it because of gender bias and say, Phoebe was a minister of the church at Gentiari, and then there was Junior, Romans 16, 7. Greet Andronicus and Junior, my relatives, who were in prison with me. They were prominent among the apostles. Prominent among the apostles. OK, we can discuss the translation, but however we translate it, it looks like Junior is a leader in the church. The only other alternative is to give poor Junior a sex change operation and make her Junius a male name, as some Bible translators did. The trouble is, the evidence all suggests that the first person to do this was Zagidius of Rome, who lived in the late 1200s, early 1300s. Earlier Christian teachers and saints, if they mention her, speak of her as a woman, among them Jerome, who was no feminist himself. Then there's Priscilla and her husband Aquila, he usually gets second billing, who led the church in Rome, Romans 16, 3-5. Now, if Paul approved and commended these women leaders, there's something funny going on if in 1 Corinthians 14:34 he says that women shouldn't speak in church. Was Paul a faffy ditherer who kept changing his mind on significant issues of church leadership? Especially, would he have changed his mind on one where early Christian practice went so deeply against Greek and Roman culture? One where the church after Paul did change its mind. So, this is a difficult text and quick easy answers won't work. Find out how I suggest we approach it tomorrow. Bye for now.